Welcome to Setting the Stage. I'm Brooke Savage. MegaCon is now through Sunday, and several anime actors will be there, including Sarah Natacheni. She's the voice of Ash Ketchum in Pokemon. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So the first question I have to ask, how did you land your role as Ash, especially at 18 years old? I was 18 years old. Um, I had a, an English teacher in my high school who recommended me to a manager who got me the audition for Pokemon. It was totally random. I didn't think about being a voice actor at all. And um, I forgot that it was happening. I had an at-a-glance calendar. And I don't know if you remember these things, but you have to turn the page to the next week. The audition was on a Monday. I didn't turn the page till Monday morning. And I was like, oh no. So I ran to my friend's house and I'm like, you gotta help me with this. I gotta, I gotta get this job. This is an amazing job. So I go to her house, I start practicing. She's like, you're never gonna get this. I go down to the audition. Um, I didn't know what dubbing was. It's like, you gotta look at a TV and the script at the same time. How do you put your eyes in two places at once? And I start reading, I start doing it, and they're like, okay, okay. They kept me there for half an hour, which at that point in my career, 18 years old, didn't realize was a good thing. And I left the audition crying, sobbing. How could I be so unprepared? I'm so unprofessional, the whole, the whole thing. And uh, then I got a call, there was a callback, and, da -da -da, and then I got the job. It was a phone call. I've looked through my emails and I can't find anything proving that I actually have this job. So, Wow, that is yeah. amazing. It seems it's always interesting how things happen. Yeah. Um, so what ha what did you do like before you got into voice acting? High school. High school. Uh, no, I did. Uh, <laughs> I did. Uh, I actually did Guys and Dolls in high school. I played Sarah and I went to Lee Strasberg alongside high school so I could, you know, study some craft. And I uh, did a bunch of short films. I did one like feature length indie film and yeah, some, some plays. And then I got this. So voice yeah. acting kind of came to you. Oh, totally. Way. Yeah, it's not even something I considered. And, but now looking back, like as a child, I was always making up languages and doing voices and impressions and stuff. So yeah, I was at UCB as well, like during high school. I did Strasbourg and uh, Bright Citizens Brigade. So I did a lot of sketch and improv and yeah, I, I liked to play a lot. And you talked a little bit about the multitasking yeah. of voice acting. Tell us about your day-to-day -day when it comes to voice oh. recording. Uh, sure, yeah. So uh, if you're very lucky, you have a couple sessions a week. Um, with Pokemon for 17 years, I had a couple sessions a week, and then I had a really nice stretch of time where I was like booking a lot of other shows and kind of being the lead in every show, and that was an incredible time and um yeah i've been really fortunate to be working all the time but yeah basically you wake up you look at your calendar preferably the day before now lesson learned and um you know do your sessions now we're doing it at home so i'm at home and i go in my booth and come out of my booth and then go on about my day learning whatever i'm learning and you know doing whatever other work i'm doing coming to conventions um and uh, you do auditions a lot of auditions i like doing my auditions at night so, yeah. And so when you're doing, but when it comes to anime, mm -hmm. it's like a lot of multitasking. You're looking yes. at a monitor, looking at your script. Right. Talk to us about the challenges of that because your scripts are cold. Like you don't it's get cold. them until that day, right? Yeah, yeah. Since the pandemic, we do get we do get links to them, but we're I, I'm so maybe newer actors are not used to it. I'm used to just reading them cold, and it's become such an incredible skill to have to be able to just like take a script and like kind of magically know exactly what to do with it. I'm so lucky. I don't know how I know how to do this, but I think it's just time and experience. Um, so yeah, you get, you come into the booth, you see the script in front of you, you have a TV in front of you, and it's playing the Japanese or whatever the original language is in anime, it's usually Japanese. And uh, you match each line, it has a time code, time code on screen, you match each line to what you see on screen. You have a director telling you like what's going on in the scene so you don't spend too much time watching everything down. Um, yeah, and you just go line by line. It's not even, I'm not even doing the scene by scene. I have to go line by line. So like there's a lot of trust with the director. When they tell you this needs more energy, you have to trust them. And yeah, it's, it's, com it's complex. It is complex. It's, it's, their dubbing is like technical and artistic at the same time. It's a marriage of those two things. And pacing is also important, right? Yes. Because you have to yeah. make sure you're matching their lip flaps and right. the cartoons. Yeah, you don't want like, yeah, hey, here we are. 
you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, people who have musical backgrounds, which thankfully I do, I think tend to do better in dubbing because we're good at like just kind of magically assessing a pace and, and matching our timing to that pace. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how long does it take to record an episode, especially since, you know, you do more than Ash. You play several characters. Yeah, I play 21 of the Pokemon, and I play Ash's mom, and I play Don's mom, and Skyla, and a bunch of other uh, trainers that show up, you know, every once in a while. Um, uh, I, think, I think the entire show, the entire episode, probably takes two weeks to do. My part, I'm usually in the booth four to eight hours a week. Wow, yeah. so not like in a day? It takes 48 hours a week to yeah, record? Yeah, 48, not okay. 48. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 4 Just to 8. To <laughs> 48 hours a week I'm working on the one show. <laughs> yeah, no, just, yeah. And what yeah. has voice dubbing taught you? Because I know in one video you mentioned, like, people learned English. Yes. For example, that way. Yeah. Um, it's taught me how to act within severe, confined restraints. Is that a sentence? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my sentence. Just sticking to it. Um, yeah, it, you, you don't have much room to play and you have to find the, the minutia of, of, the, of the play. You know, you have to take that one line and make the most of it in the context that you're given. So yeah, it taught me how to make a meal out of, uh, out of a morsel. I, I feel like we do that a lot here in Noose too. Yeah. Not gonna lie. <laughs> in a different way, but I <laughs> yes. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah. So um, you mentioned how you play different characters, even random trainers mm -hmm. who come up. Yeah. I have to imagine there's so many different voices yeah. you have to think of. Where do you get inspiration for that? Oh, the subway, mm. the New York City subway. I've been riding the train by myself since I was like 10 years old. So uh, just listening to people, not, not spending too much time with headphones on. You have every accent, every, people from all walks of life are there. Mm -hmm. So just listen, keep your ears open. That's it. It's interesting because I always hear about how actors mm -hmm. draw in, and, and writers draw yeah. inspiration from real life. Oh, yeah. yeah. Listen, if you're talking too loud, I'm listening. And how do you relate to Ash? Oh, the tenacity. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. Um, he's tenacious. He stays positive, and that's something I learned over time. You know, I, I was not so much like Ash when I started, but I, I kept booking the protagonists in all these shows, and I'm like, there's got to be something in me that's not kind of a shut-in, which I was for a long time. Um, so I discovered my adventurous nature. Now I'm on a plane almost every other week and I feel weird when I'm not. I'm like, mm -hmm. why, am I sitting, why am I sitting still? Um, and uh, the tenacity I always had, lost for a while. Now it's back. I'm here. <laughs> um, yeah, the adventurous nature, that's really the biggest thing I, I learned from Ash. And what's your favorite part of his journey? Ooh. Oh my goodness, I've never been asked that. <laughs> my favorite part of his journey? His relationship with Pikachu. Oh, I love yeah, that. I would say so. What do you love about yeah. their relationship? It's everlasting, it's, it's, it's a given. It's never gonna go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 such, it's such a unique bond. And I'm a cat person and my cat's name is Pikachu. And I like to say that we are same. <laughs> I don't send Pikachu into battle. That's a di that's different. Mm -hmm. But actually, I kind of do because he fights with the other cats. Wait, we don't. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> so <laughs> this might be a given, but you can mention other ones if you want to too. What is your favorite Pokemon? Pikachu. And do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> so you don't have any others that you also like? Sure. As well? I mean, I could list off a thousand. Um, Buneary is my favorite one to play on the show. Buneary, Buneary, that's very cute. Um, and uh, let's see. I love a good Snorlax. Love a good Charizard. Meloetta. Meloetta mm -hmm. brings the music. I stole that one from Erica Schroeder. She said that was her favorite, and I'm like, that's genius. Mine mm -hmm. too. Mine too. Um, oh, I love uh, Meltan. Mm -hmm. Love a good Meltan. That was always my favorite. And mm -hmm. then I started really assessing who are my favorites. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my list. Not going to lie, growing up, I did love Pikachu, but I also loved uh, Jigglypuff. Love a Jigglypuff. And yeah. Eevee. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I know, they're great. Best designs in the world. And what advice do you have for other aspiring uh, voice actors? Oh, well, it depends on who you are, where you are, where you're at in your career, in your studies. Study acting. Um, 
basically, I don't want to say everyone, not everyone, but most of the voice actors working today are actors first. Um, if you're looking at uh, things like Family Guy, adult animation, most of those people are doing improv and comedy and they're doing on camera as well. So um, if that's your goal, that's the route you should be taking. Um, have fun, play, don't try to be perfect, don't, don't, you know, cut, don't cut all your breaths out of your auditions. You're a human being, show your humanity. If they didn't want a human being, they'd make a robot. Mm -hmm. Another conversation. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. It seems yeah. like a lot of voice actors also obviously know how to do on camera. Yes. Acting yeah. as well. I guess yeah. it's, it's like learning the basics, right? Totally, totally. And it's, you know, it's, it's not about having a great voice. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. A lot of us <clears throat> sound like that. So it's early. It's, <laughs> it's early. Um, so, yeah, uh, when people come up to me and say, I have a, people tell me I have a nice voice, I'm like, yeah, but can you act? Mm -hmm. Can you maintain a character in that voice? Can you change your voice? Can you, you know, can you be useful? Can you be a good utility player where you can do 10 different voices in the span of one show? Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's what you kind of need to be generally. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's definitely an interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. What are you excited about for Megacon? Oh boy, what am I excited about for Megacon? Uh, the cast of Entourage is going to be there. That's my childhood. Oh, I'm so excited to meet them. Um, I'm excited to meet the fans. I'm excited to you know hear people's stories and hear how my work has changed them even just a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see if I taught anyone English here in Florida. <laughs> yeah, I saw you have a trivia. You have a trivia lined up and a yes. Q and A lined up. So how yes. do you feel about those things? Oh, I'm so excited! So we do them at all the fan expos. We do a Q and A. I do them. I do a Q and A generally at every convention. Um, Q and A is just general. You know, ask me anything. Uh, and then the the trivia is fun because we have some questions that are real stumpers. And you have like you always have like some kids in the front who are like, and I'm like, give everybody a chance. <laughs> And then I just have to like play cop and sponge. Yes, kids memorize so much. <laughs> they, do. they know a lot. Sponges. Yes. Wild. And so how fun. how does it feel to be in Orlando? You said this is your second time here. What do you love about yes. Orlando? I was here I was here at Disney World when I was seven. There was a place called Pleasure Island. Do you remember this? Yes, it's at Disney Springs. They closed it. No, it's still there. Oh, it's um, Disney Springs now. It's called something else now. Yes. That's right. Yes, it was called Downtown Disney. Yes. Now it's Disney Springs, but okay. they kind of got rid of Pleasure Island. The Pleasure Island. Island thing is gone. Yeah. When I was seven, I'm like, Mom, I want to go there. <laughs> and she was like, no, <laughs> it's not. we're not going there. Mm -hmm. So um, that was my first experience here last year. I was here very briefly, but I went to Universal, mm -hmm. and I had some fun on the rides there. And uh, this time, I want to go to Epcot because I haven't been there since I was seven. And I actually have no idea what goes on in there. So you are going to try to check out the theme parks outside yeah. of Megacon? Yeah. Oh, and the restaurants. Awesome. I have some friends coming, so they'll like take me around actual Orlando, mm -hmm. not just Disney. Yeah. Do people sometimes recognize you? Sometimes. Yeah. It's cute. What is something you get <laughs> a lot? Uh, do the voice. <laughs> which I know everybody always apologizes for asking, but it's like, of course. Like, that's my joy, to be able to just like do a sound for you. Mm -hmm. And you get joy out of that that's you know what a power it's awesome does anyone ever like quote lines from the show to you uh less of, less of that mm -hmm. less of that more just like oh my god can you say something to me and I'm like, of course Aww. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what are you working on now because you talked about you told me about uh doing theater in la yes uh so i'm doing an evening of shell silverstein just a bunch of short plays i'm in three of them and mm. I'm doing uh, two plays by Ethan Cohen. One is called Debate. The other one is called Talking Cure. And it's at the 905 Cold Theater in Hollywood. Uh, we're doing six weekends of starting March 1st. And you're also uh, working on other anime shows as well? Yes, I'm in Tokyo Revengers. The, uh, season two is on Hulu right now. And um, non-anime, I have a film called Unicorn Boy by Matt Keel, uh, starring Pat Oswalt and Marie Bamford. Uh, Michelle Trachtenberg, Harold Perrineau, and it's just fantastic. It's making this, uh, fe it's doing the festival circuit right now. It won the Arizona Film Festival, so really, really proud of that. Yeah, you've yeah. been really busy. <laughs> it's been great. Yeah, yeah. I have a podcast called Across from Jericho. Um, we're, yeah, we're, that's you can you can see that now. You can hear it. Sorry, let me start that again. 
Um, I have a podcast called Across from Jericho, which you can hear now on wherever you get your podcasts. Um, I play Emma Goldman, who was mm -hmm. an anarchist in the early 19th century, sorry, 20th century. Um, and yeah, I'm really proud of that, actually. It's really, really good. That's awesome. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. It was cool to play a real person for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. So what's next for you? What are your some of your long-term goals? Because you seem um, to be into everything. Yeah, I'm into a lot, so it's hard to prioritize. Um, I really wanted to get back on stage after all of this and um, get back into comedy, you know, just comedic acting. I don't want to do stand-up or anything like that, but um, comedic acting, uh, I want to start auditioning again, I think, and I want to write a film. I'm working on, I'm working on writing a film about uh, like loosely based on my experiences over the last 17 years mm -hmm. you know a voice actor who wow. deals with voice acting things <laughs> yeah i love it yeah do you have anything else you want to like bring up to the fans um you know be the very best like no one ever was and uh come follow me on socials i won a webby for my social media last year i enjoyed doing it it's really <laughs> fun um and come see me at megacon Awesome. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So we'll yeah. be at MegaCon. It's at the Orange County Convention Center. Again, that's today through Sunday.